All who are able, please rise. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as Christ has loved us. Let us love one another. Beloved people of God, this is the day when Christ, our Passover lamb, surrendered himself to those who would kill him, setting us free from sin and death forever. This is the day when Christ, our teacher and Lord, knelt down to wash the disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the day when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy meal with his followers, offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. O God, let us pray. O God, your love is embodied in Jesus Christ, who washed disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal, wash us from the stain of sin, so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial and praise him always as Lord and Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
us pray. Eternal God, by your word and spirit, you have given us a new commandment to love and serve one another in Jesus' name. Let the good news of your liberating love be sealed in our hearts and shown in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, and all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Holy wisdom, holy word. Sacrifice of thanks I bring 
pay my vow to the Lord in the courts of God. In the midst of Jerusalem, Amen. How can I from 1 Corinthians. For I receive from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when He was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. In the same way, He took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Holy wisdom, holy word. Gospel of the Lord according to Saint John. Now, before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that the hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things unto his hands, God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that had been tied around him. And he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. And after he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, but that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. And very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had 
gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer, but you will look for me. As I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. Where I am going, you cannot come. And I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. It is so good to be here standing before you on this sacred holy night, Maundy Thursday. We do this only once every year. And it is during this Passion Week we retell the stories of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And from an outside world, this may look a little bit silly, but it is in a very important part of our posture of our faith, and it is an invitation to a story in which a discipleship, the rabbi shows an expression of love, a servanthood. And this has so much value and lessons to be learned from this. If only those who lead could wash the disciples' feet or the people that they serve wash their feet in the world. What we do is reenacting world peace. What we are doing is bringing a human humanity to our world. It is an invitation to a story we're drawn in where we are giving respect for one another, to show love for one another. This whole Monday Thursday, Good Friday, taking human suffering seriously, and the Great Easter visual. I am really excited about this hobby. There's part of me that is elated and joyful, and there's also this part of me that is very solemn and, and really takes me to a place where you would not normally, I would normally not be, not be unless on this occasion, on this liturgical season in which all of us are brought to this place, and not only for me, but for all the Christian churches around the world are celebrating through this journey. So here we are, the washing of feet. I love this story, and I know we retell this story over and over again with Peter and Jesus, their conversation. And he says, oh no, I respect you too much. You can't wash my feet. You can't do that. And Jesus says, no, I'm going to need to wash your feet. This is very, very important. And Jesus, of course, all says, you know, tell him the importance of what it means to wash the feet. But somehow, Peter always seems to miss the point, right? Oh, if you're going to wash my feet, then please wash my hand, wash my... Just give me a bath, give me a shower. <laughs> because you mean so much to me. And he's, Jesus says, you're already clean, but your feet is always dirty. So I'm going to need to have to wash your feet. You could take this literally, this story, but if we understand it as we should, from the view of faith and spiritual um, eyes, when we enter this into a metaphorical reality, it speaks such volume. Our feet, as we, as we watch, wash our feet from each other, I know this is somewhat embarrassing, right? We become vulnerable because our feet is dirty. We need to wash our feet. If you've been around and places that others may not know, it is private. It is very private in many ways. But to wash and bless the feet wherever this feet have been, or to acknowledge it, to wash it and say, this is where you are today. You have another fresh start. 
you are loved. You are held by God's grace. Our feet's been all over the place. So tonight, as we wash each other's feet, know that our faith is renewed, that God blesses our journey together. And in our journey, wherever our feet carry and will carry us into the future, God blesses our journey. And our path may not be perfect, but it's not the perfection we're seeking, but wholeness. But all the fallacies and imperfections and all the crevices of dirtiness in our feet, whatever that may be, we are all looking for a wholeness and healing. And through this rite of liturgical acid, if you will, we enter this holy week. It says a lot. So may the blessings of God be with us, knowing that we care for each other's journey. And we are here for a reason, This on this oasis of faith here, that we come to be nourished, to be fed, to quench our thirst, and now our feet get blessed. We're not going to get our spiritual feet washed again for another year. We start again. Next year around, come again. There's a lot of dirt on that feet. But God is blessing everywhere we go, knowing that no matter where we are, God is ever present. Then all God's children said, Amen. Amen. to take part in the washing of feet, a sign of Christ's love and care for us, and of the humble service to which we are called as Christ's disciples. <clears throat> if you do want to participate, you'll be escorted to either of the foot washing stations. And they and I will begin and demonstrate for you at each of them. We will be the foot washers as we begin this.
this time, we please rise and turn to one another and exchange the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> oh yeah. Peace. The Lord said to Moses, This shall be a day of remembrance for you, and you shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. And Paul says to the church, As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You made us in your image and freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot your covenant, you spoke through prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the celestial choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In humility he descended from your height. He kneeled in obedience to love's commands. He who is boundless takes on the bondage of our sin. He who is free takes our place in death prison. He who is risen leads us to eternal life. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, he took bread and gave Thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. 
Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break this bread and share one cup, giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ and offering ourselves to live for him in joy and grateful praise. Let us declare the memorial acclamation. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. Make them the body and blood of Christ that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, make us one with him and one another. Send us out to live for others as Christ lived for us, and keep us faithful until we feast with him in glory. Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit, to live as love commands. Bound to Christ, set us free for joyful obedience and glad service. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Church, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Amen and amen. Amen. amen and amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one bread, we who are many are, are one, because it is one loaf from which we all partake. And when we break the bread, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? is a blessing for us. And is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you. 
Eyes for the prayer after communion. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption we have shared in the body and blood of our Savior. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.